want to talk quickly in the next few moments about something, and you already see my title, Unity. Somebody say unity. 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 United. United. What is the little saying they say? United we stand, divided we. But the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can help make this happen. Do you know that? This is a prayer that Jesus prayed. And most times we ask God for things. We, we ask God to answer our prayers. Is that right? And that's good. God wants us to ask him for things. Lord, bless me. God, do this for us. Watch over us. Protect us. And so 99.9 .9 of our prayers is, that, is just that. God do for us. But did you know you can pray and actually be an answer to his prayer? Wouldn't that be amazing to actually be the answer to God's prayer, to Jesus' prayer? You say, really? Jesus prayed? Oh, yeah. Oh, he prayed constantly. And he prayed not only uh, uh, for, for his relationship, but he prayed for his disciples. He prayed for his people. He said to Peter, I prayed for you. One of Jesus' primary jobs right now, if you will, or positions right now is praying for you and I, interceding for you and I. That's a good thought. But one of the prayers of Jesus is that we be one. Somebody say one. And I want to take you quickly to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, and we'll open it up from verse number 20 and just kind of see what he's saying to us. He says, I do not pray for these alone. He's praying. He says, but not for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. See, he's not only praying for his disciples, for his followers right now, but he says there's still a lot of us coming that's going to believe. He's prophesying this. And he says, I'm already praying for you. So right now, Jesus, how many know that prophecy is being fulfilled? He's praying for us, we who believed on that word. Amen? And then if we continue on in verse 21, he says it like this. He says, and they, that they all may be one. All of his disciples, all of his children might be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. That's so beautiful, so beautiful. For the Lord Jesus, that not only is he saying that as I am in you and you in me, but that they be in us. You are in him, in the Godhead. That's so awesome that he's, he's reckoning for us to be, and that also they be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Verse 20, uh, 23 says like this, 20, uh, 22. Let's go there. And that the glory which you have given me, I have given them. I, I, I pray we realize what he's saying here. The glory you've given me, I've given them. Wow. That they may be one, just as we are one. That's awesome. Verse number 23. And in them, watch this. I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. I love that. And that the world may know, that the world may know. How is the world going to know that we, his disciples, that we, 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 we followers of Christ? The number one way is what? That we love one another, isn't it? That, that was Jesus' prayer, that we love one another. But he says that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Oh, my goodness. God, who said, this is my beloved son. Jesus said that the same way you love me is how you love them. God loves you. God loves his people. Isn't that wonderful to know that? I want to talk about this for just a little bit if we could. And I want you to take your Bibles or make some notes as we go along. If you, uh, you know, if you're from a big family or just a family with some kids in it, you know how, how civil rivalry can be. Any, anybody ever fought with your brother or your sister or you got kids doing that? <laughs> the rest of us fix your halo. <clears throat> Eight in our family, I'm the youngest. You know I had to fight for everything, right? 
in, in our house, however, there, there was not such a thing as shotgun. It didn't matter if I shouted, shotgun! I was not gonna get it, because the other guys trumped me. They just did. And as a result, whenever we went anywhere, guess where I sat? If not in the trailer, <laughs> if there was one. But, you know, this happens in homes. It happens without, without kids, you know, it, it, oh my goodness. Five, five boys and a girl, and you're going anywhere. Be bickering and all this kind of stuff going on. And uh, uh, remember how it goes, you, come on, when you, when you just tell them we're going somewhere, we're going to the mall or going to McDonald's or wherever you're going, and, and they get ready, somebody shouts shotgun, and the others, oh, oh, I said it first. No, no, you didn't. I did. Yes, you did. And there's the fight. And you're just like, get in the car, right? <laughs> I know you've never had to raise your voice. I, I just love you so very much for that. But... Um, and then you get in the car and they can't, you know, was it not too long ago, thank God for older siblings because I have twins and they love each other, but they can hate each other here too. <laughs> you know, we would, in our road, there's, a, there's some cows on the one side and, and some younger cows on the other side. So from when they were little, they picked their sides. These cows, when they come out, Jonathan, whoever was on this side, they couldn't say hello to his cows because they were his. <laughs> and the other one couldn't do it for the, you know, they had their own sides. And so one day I think uh, what happened to Elise was uh, one of them said, Mom, he, he mooed my cow. <laughs> <laughs> it's spinning, it's fighting, it's hitting, it, it come on all of the above. And you're the driver, you know, and you just don't let you, how many know you can adjust that mirror? And that way you can see them. And then you threaten them. If I have to get back there, I'm going to pull the car over. How many has ever done this kind of stuff? I know it's just not me, you know. <laughs> if you've got kids and they're breathing and they, they're alive, you've had to do some of this. You guys not in your car. I know it's not happening there. I know you got angels for kids, my goodness. Mine had little horns grow, <laughs> I think, I think, I think. I had to shave it off really quick. But, but this is, you know, and, you know, you, you, thinking back over it, it, it's, it, it makes light and you kind of laugh about it, but at the time, it's really hurting you. It, it's painful when they really mean to each other. I mean, you know, they can be mean sometimes call each other the most ugliest names and hitting and spitting and she breathed on me and he, I, come on. And you just cry for peace and quiet. Can we just have peace until we can get there? I've actually had to pull the car over. I didn't just threaten it, I did. And uh, got in back there with him. I promise you two minutes later, it was quiet back there. We settled that really quick. I mean, you know, it's fun when you're on your way to church, to the house of God, and you're just a few, few minutes away, and all hell breaks loose. I mean, Lucifer enters your car. Has it ever happened to you? And you know in just a minute you're going to park and somebody's going to say, hey, brother so-and-so, and you can't be mean. You then got to put on that fake smile. No, I know you haven't had to do that, but... Goodness, it breaks You just want them to get along. You just, mm. you know, I've said this before. The last words I heard my mother say to us as she called us closer on her deathbed, said, love one another. It wasn't get rich. It wasn't work hard. Buy a new house, buy a new car, none of that, sir. Love one another. Love one another. That was her prayer. That, I think that's a parent's prayer. Let the kids just love one another. Can they just get along? Can they just love one another? Now, if that, we are human beings. Imagine our heavenly father watches his children tearing each other apart, fighting, hurting each other, saying hurtful things. Come on, how many know good Christians can say some mean things? 
in the house, in the family, in, at home, to the kids, a husband, a wife. This stuff happens, friend. It happens everywhere. It happens on the job with a coworker. We hurt one another so quickly. And here Jesus is praying that they may be one, that they may love one another. So how do you do this? You know, I've actually, it, it, it is at times when they were young, gotten so bad that it frustrates you so much. You, you walk away and actually you, you weep over, the, over what has just happened, the fight or whatever that was. I've watched my mother cry many times when the brothers would get into it. To it. I've watched her. And you just want to run over there and say, you know, and, and we have many times. I'm sorry. Because you start realizing it's just not the two of us or how whoever's. And you're hurting the parent when the, you see them. And so, or when there's a fight in the house, husband, wife. How many know the kids are scared? They don't know what to do. They, they don't know how to handle this. And perhaps maybe somebody would yell out and all they could do is, stop, stop fighting. Because it hurts. Jesus prays that they be one as you are in me and I'm in you, that they be in us, that they be one. And so I want us just to look at some things as we together will find out and walk this journey. This may take us a little bit of time. I want to actually come back next week and give us some practical steps. But I'm going to attempt some areas here that we can kind of follow along. I looked at, you know, just looking at the whole picture of this. I wanted to know, does uh, church folks fight? Is there church arguments? Are there people in the house of God? Surely not. You know, everybody agrees about everything, right? Uh, well, I found a few things that uh, they tell me. Uh, how, uh, big arguments, fights, church splits uh, over the silliest, silliest things. It's, Usually it's nothing big, it's usually the, the, the silly, insignificant things. I, I looked at this and somebody wrote number one, they saw uh, there, there were fights, big fight over whether or not to build a children's play, playground or use the land for a cemetery. So they had a big fight over that. Another fight and actually almost caused a split in the church was a fight over whether or not to remove the clock in the sanctuary or not. Another fight, the argument was over what, which picture of Jesus they're going to hang in the foyer. Oh, yeah, they got angry. <laughs> Another split, and it happened so many times, is over the color of the carpet in the new sanctuary. One bunch wants it one way and another bunch wants it the other. Well, God gave us wisdom when we did this. <laughs> You've been a church, uh, around church a little while, you're going to find out what not to and to do. <laughs> so we had a professional come tell us what we want in here. <laughs> Hopefully we didn't get anybody mad. I know we did some. Because others wanted red chairs, another wanted black, and another one, and I'm going, help us, Lord. Bring that lady. Bring the professional. So we could only blame the professional. Well, she did it. She said, <laughs> wisdom, praise the Lord. Another big fight that, that has happened in church, and it still does today, is whether to use real wine or grape juice during in communion. If you're wondering what we should do, talk to Steve back there. He's the one mixing it all for us. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> he won't blame his wife, maybe. But it is just such trivial nonsense. People fighting over, well, they, where the vacuum cleaner, you know, was gone or was broken. Somebody else broke it or... Where the pastor should have permission to go get the mail from the mailbox. That was... Who should put the stamps on the, on, on the mail? 
When his car was broken, another one was there was a church split uh, in the board over whether he could drive the church van or not. This is church for you. Fighting over non essentials I mean, stuff that really, and, and the enemy, you could just imagine, the enemy is just laughing. The devil says, let me just get them fighting, but they'll leave me alone, right? And so I, I just want to focus on one or two areas here today. Matter of fact, three areas, if I can get to them tonight. How we can help fulfill or make the prayer of Jesus come to pass. How many want to be part of that? That you could actually help make Jesus' prayer come to pass. I mean, that'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be wonderful that I could play a part? I could make that happen. And I bring, you know, what I can do. So number one, number one that you want to write down, how we can have unity as believers is realize, number one, that you have one enemy. You only have one real enemy. You don't have, listen, your brother and your sister is not your enemy. The one sitting on the other side of the church is not your enemy. My pastor, when, when we first got to know him uh, several many years ago, Brother Baggett, when he came to Nashville, um, he was from Arkansas and they, he came to this church and man, the board was running the whole thing. They were split four different ways. They had about 40 people, uh, you know, and, and they were all in different sections and each, one, each section hated each other. And he showed up and he like, whoa, walked into a hornet's nest. He walked into his office the first day and, and, and some of the had their feet up on his desk, on the pastor's desk, leaning back and say, now, now here's what we want you to do. Here's what we want to, you know, he, he, he looked at that. He goes, okay, okay, that's, that's how y'all do it here. One guy said, you don't have what it takes. You, 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 you know, you so country, you have cornbread in your pockets. <laughs> I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, it was just some amazing things that, you know, but God was blessing. They started increasing and, and, and different things. I wish you could hear some of his testimonies. So number one is you have one enemy. Remember that. The church down the road is not your enemy. Just because they sing other songs or, or have a different way of, they not our enemy. And as love's way, I do not want any of us, I don't want to hear among us that we've been talking about other churches in our area. All we do is lift them up and pray for them and say, God, fill them up. Bless them, God. Come on, somebody. We're not going to be talking about them bad, amen, because that's our brothers. They're our sisters. We need to be praying for one another. And one of the big things we can do is go ahead and love everybody, amen. Oh, we're going we're gonna to help make this prayer come to pass. To realize, how do you do that? You realize they're not our enemy. The devil is our enemy. We have one big enemy. We went on a revival some time back into a, a little town of Ohio, and uh, we talked to the pastor and some of his uh, elders and leaders and said, man, we want to take the city for Jesus. How can we be of help? What do you want us to do? We'll go to Walmart, give us some flyers. Do, you know, whatever you've got to do. Is there a local radio, in, uh, radio station in your town? We, we could do. They said, well, you know, no, this is just for our, our, our church. They had about 25 people in there. No, 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 this, this revival is just for our church. We said, don't you want to reach everybody else in your city? No, 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 the, the church of Christ is just too strong in our community, and we, we don't want to upset them. It's like, that's the enemy? They're not your enemy. Let's work together. I mean, they were naming different names like that. Now, When, you, when I'm looking at this in the house, in the family, your kids, the boss, the coworker, the church down the road, they're not your enemy, friend. The one in your house is not your enemy. You may think they are. There's an enemy behind that. The influence behind the whole thing. So, so many times we, we look at individuals like this. Now, e Ephesians tells us this. Would you go with me to Ephesians chapter 6 and number 12? He says a couple of different ways in translations, he says, For we wrestle not against 
See, he's using wrestle, that means fight. Another translation says, uh, our, our uh, how does it say it? Our struggle is not, it's the same thing. Our struggling or our fight is not against flesh and blood. What is he saying? It's not people. People is not your problem. Say that with me, people is not my problem. It's not my enemy. I don't care who they are. Our wrestle, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We know this scripture by heart. Against powers, against rulers of darkness of this, of this age, against of spiritual hosts of wicked. I mean, he's describing all of this, and it comes down to one, is the devil. And the devil, has, he's got legions of demons, but they all get the instructions from one. It's him. Lucifer, Slewfoot, Satan. Are you with me today? Yeah. Wickedness in heavenly places, even in high places. Wickedness. So they everywhere. And they influence people. They give a thought. In, they, they operate and move in different ways. You know, as angels are there to protect and help and serve and be a blessing and, and, and uh, I mean, you know, there are demons trying to dis distract and discourage and, and bring situations and, 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 and watch. See, they can't make you do anything. They just give the suggestion or create, you know, the problem and then watch you go ahead and freak out and do their dirty work. Hmm. <laughs> so... People is not our problem quickly, and we're going to dig a little deeper later, but it's the enemy. It's the old devil. And let me just go on right now. Number two says, and I want you to look at number two, in order to have a spirit of unity of what Jesus is praying for, let's go to the, the, the number two, is to have one heart. Realize that the devil is your enemy. Secondly, is must have one heart. What does that mean? In Acts chapter 4, We'll go to that scripture, Acts chapter 4, 32 says this. And I'll just wait a minute. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one, say that, heart. The multitude, the Christians who believed on the Lord Jesus, they were of one heart and one soul. Neither did any say that any of the things that he possessed was his own. Boy, there was just the spirit of unity among them, right? But that they had all things in common. They didn't have big eyes and little U's. No, everybody was the same there. They were of one heart, one soul, one accord. And when that happens, miracles can happen. When there's division and bickering and fighting, listen, evil is present when that happens. Always remember, even our prayers are hindered when you're part of a fighting and a bickering and a carrying on. Come on, help me with this. That even our prayers, that you want to break through in prayer, but unless we resolve, unless we ask forgiveness, and that's a big one, to say, listen, I've hurt you, I am so sorry. We want to just jump in and keep moving, and then we wonder why our prayers are not being answered, why stuff is happening. You first got to make right to move forward. Amen. I hope that's not too foreign for us. But we've got to be of one heart if we're going to have the spirit of unity. Those who believed were of one heart and of one soul. You say, preacher, what does that mean? It doesn't mean we ha agree. How many of you can agree to disagree? You can still be of one heart. Even if I have a different idea about something, right? Right? You're not, you're not, this is not the Soviet Union. Everybody has to think the same way. No, God has blessed us with, we, we love diversity. We love people with, you know, that's why we're we, we assembling a little team. Uh, uh, and, and I don't know who God's going to put in there, but it's, uh, I've been praying about this for a long time. Haven't had the release quite yet, but it's coming like a dream team, a, a creative dream team with us to see where God could take us. And within that, it's, it's like our board. We ever, you know, we come in there. You just, you know, it's, one person doesn't have it all. It takes everybody with some amazing ideas, and we see a big picture. We see some big things for God happen. Why? Because we have one heart. Amen? It's the one heart thing. 
It's not, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, the differences. Differences can be good. In a marriage, it can be good. Can you believe that? I wish Elise would think exactly like I think, but boy, that would be amazing, and, and she wouldn't like that, so she thinks differently than I do. I say it's hot, she says it's cold. I said, let's go, let's go out eat. She says, no, I'm going to cook at home. Just using for example, right? She's good with money and, 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 you know, studied that stuff and amazing. And so as a result, she likes to save every penny. I want to go spend it. <laughs> and vice versa sometimes. Where she just want to go and go and I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Budget is not going to allow for that. Diversity, differences. Right? And, and, and the way we, you know, I want to sometimes just unscrew the, the kids' heads because I'm so mad at them, and she just want to love on them. And no, they're little angels. I said, yeah, with sometimes with little horns. <laughs> and I'm thinking I could just kill them and make more, you know. I don't know, but no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's be nice. But there are days like, oh, my heavens. <laughs> There are days when you ask them to do something and they answer you back and it's not the answer you're looking for. And I just want to go over there and fix the problem. And Elise says, no, grace. I'm grace. <laughs> but then we go back in the room and we got to get together with a plan over here, you know, because you got to be united in this thing. And then we come out and go, okay, here's what we've decided. <laughs> it kind of works, you know, when you kind of get a united plan going. I had my idea, she had hers, but then we oftentimes uh, find the wisdom in that, and usually it was what I said in the first place, you know, that's just, <laughs> oh, I didn't get a good amen there, I did not get a good amen there. Ah, uh, you people just, at least looks like they're on your side tonight. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Mm-mm-mm. But you know how that goes. We, we have different ideas. But it's, there's wisdom in some of that. If we're just willing to listen, amen. We can, we, 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 at the end of the day, we come into some kind of agreement. Why? Because we've got one heart, one soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I, I just love when I'm looking at this. And number three, really quickly, number three is purpose. One purpose. We got one devil. You have to have one heart, one soul, but you have to have one purpose in mind. Everybody can't have their own purpose, their own thing going on. We all pull in the same direction. One goal, one vision. Can't be two visions now. You may have a different idea or, 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 or where we talk about some things, how to get to the same vision, right? It's still the same vision. If it's in the family, it's how to, how to be a, a, a home and not just a house, brick and mortar. It's how we're going to train our children. It's the same vision. You may have different ways of getting there because we all grew up in different time zones and, you know, different things. How you were raised was a little different than how, and that's why marriage is so amazing. <laughs> Boy, it takes the, first, takes the first 10 years just to get to know each other. Now you throw a kid in the, in the mix in the first year, it's like, well, help us, right? This is all foreign to you, I know, I know, I know. But you have these two different worlds, they become one, and you start planning out and cutting out the same vision for your family. You want to see your home blessed. So how do you get there? You work this out. Perhaps... Another has a better, you never saw that idea before. You never saw it from that angle. So you're like, wow, okay. But we, we have the same purpose in mind. Our purpose is to win, to be successful. You start realizing why I'm doing what I'm, why am I doing this? It's to reach this goal, this purpose, this vision, to fulfill this plan of God. Amen. Are you with me today? One goal, one vision. We're not pulling in different directions now. It's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about each one has, you know, uh, ideas and stuff. No, no. The purpose must be the same. The goal must be the same. We pull in the same direction. 
We've all played those games where they ha either have a mud puddle in the middle, and you put some guys on this side of the rope and some others here, and they pull in different directions. And so the stronger usually wins. You don't do that in marriage. You get on the same team. When it's raising kids, you're on the same team. When it's spending money, you're on the same team. Come on, help me. Do a little marriage seminar. Amen. Whatever you're planning, you're on the same team. If the other one is over here, we're not pulling this direction. We're going to talk about this until everybody's on the same team pulling. That's the, then you reach your goal. You reach your purpose, which was to win anyway, to have success. Come on, say amen, someone. I believe one of the quickest ways to resolve arguments and uh, disagreements and things that may come up is remember the purpose. When you recall the purpose, when you remember why I'm doing what I'm doing, when purpose is in view, I wrote it down like this, I believe the Lord put it in my heart. Purpose will bring things back into focus. When you have purpose, you realize, oh my, it's not about me. It's, it's toward the purpose, right? When we're in the house of God, it's not about one individual. It's how can we collectively reach the purpose what God has given us for our city, for our church. Amen? I think I'm preaching better than what you're shouting amen over there. <laughs> no. <laughs> amen? Purpose will bring things back into focus. Don't lose your purpose. That's your vision. That's your goal. Amen? Pulling in the same direction. How are we doing on time? 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 in the living trend. Now, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Right? To stop arguing among yourselves. See, arguing is getting nobody anywhere. It's, you're not going anywhere with it. That's why you don't even as a believer get into an argument over scripture with anybody else. With unbelievers especially. Or with somebody from another. You don't get into an argument. Now if they want to learn something, if they want to know something, that's different. If they ask you a question... Or see it a little bit different and you say, well, let's, let's, let's both of us go see what the Word of God says about that. And then you go to the Word, not my opinion, not yours, but what the Word says, and we'll get to the same purpose. We'll get to the goal. But if you're just going to argue with me over argument's sake, I'm, not, uh, I'm, 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 I'm out, right? Find somewhere else. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. And so he says, stop the arguing, arguing among yourselves. Let there be a real, say that with me. Listen, we, we in our lives, we want miracles to happen in our lives. These are some of the things that help us get there. If there's no harmony, you're not going to get breakthrough. Your prayers are, are hindered anyway. You're not moving forward. So he says, number one, stop arguing and let there be real harmony so that there, what does it say? Won't be splits in the church. Boy, that's pretty plain. I plead with you to be of one mind. United in thought and in purpose. Say that word, purpose. We need to preach today. If we're going to be part of building the kingdom of God, which that's our purpose, we're here to be part of God's plan, of His plan, His purpose. So I, we, we all can get together around that and, and make sure that there's no arguing among us because when there's division and arguing and bickering and fighting, the enemy is, is winning. You think you may get your point and, and you're going to drive yours home, but really it's, it's not helping anybody. And let there be real harmony. He's, I love that because he says real harmony. Give me another word for that. When there's real Unity, harmony, hmm? truth, peace, real peace, real peace among yourselves, harmony among yourselves, not division. 
Not hating one another, not fighting, not, not talking about, you know, come on, help us here. And I believe when we get this kind of stuff right, when we start fulfilling his prayer and, and making sure I'm going to be part, I'm, I'm, I, I'm only one, but I'm, I'm going to do all I can to help fulfill that, that prayer of Jesus. And, and it, it, as I am in pursuit of that, I believe it opens over my life. Amen. I believe is answered. I believe when I'm asking for something, because now I'm in tune with him, he says that you be in me. How many know when you're in him, he in you, then anything you ask, it's going to be given to you. Because your vision, your heart, your goal, your purpose is his. Boy, this is so deep, my goodness. Amen? Let there be real harmony so that there won't be splits in the church. How did Paul know about split church splits? <laughs> I guess he's been to one or two of them. He started them over, you know, the churches all over, and he started finding out what they do in, in Corinthian church and, 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 and the Ephesian church. And he had to go over there and say, God, whoa, I hear a lot of stuff going on here. And that's why he writes uh, many of these letters to them. He said, we're going to stop this. It's for each, any one of us in reaching our community. How are we going to reach our community if the church is known for their splits and their bickering and their fighting? Do you think anybody's just waiting to come to that church? Whoa, let's go to that church. No. And, and unfortunately, bad news spread like wildfire quickly. That's why we have to protect the love of God in this house. Love's way is the only way. There is no other way. You could sing like an angel and not do it in love, and it's just... You can have your body to be burned. You can do all these amazing things if the motive is wrong, if bickering and fighting is behind it. How many know we miss the mark? We're missing the purpose, the goal. So this is just so rich to me, is my goodness. Thank you, Marietta, for finding that... Uh, translation for us because I was looking for that that one that had the word purpose in it and and because uh, different ones will say the same thing but just a little different and I like this actually and he says I plead with you to be of one mind united that's how we united unity comes in thought and purpose now she the Bible actually doesn't have purpose written that big we, I ask it to you know <laughs> But that's, that's really so plain and, and, and to see. So as we pursue unity, as we want to go after Christ and help fulfill his prayer and answer that prayer of Jesus, and he says, are you part of answering my prayer? We can say, yes, Lord. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing about it? Lord, I'm trying to be in unity with my brothers and my sisters. When there's fighting going on, I, I want to be the peacemaker. See, you could either be the agitator or the peacemaker. Which one are you? You know about that family in the church, right? It was a family. The, the brother was Dick, and the other one, his, his wife was Edgy. It was the Tater family, by the way. <laughs> Dick Tater, Agitator. And they had a little girl. What was she? Uh, imitator. And <laughs> they just carried on like that. The words of Jesus in John 17, 23 says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that's his prayer for you and I. And we're going to pursue that. We will see miracles happen. We will see signs and wonders. We will see all these other wonderful things happen. But first, this is our pursuit. This is what we're after, unity. That we all come into the unity of the Lord Jesus. One mind, one goal. You see what happened when the, when, when the was a 12, actually there was 120 in the upper room. I don't know how they did it to be in the is in unity. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Amen. These disciples, they were all different Plus a lot of other people, men and women, praying, one mind, one goal, one purpose. And the 
day of Pentecost found them. When it happened, they were there. In the right place, right time. It changed the world. Everything changed that day. So imagine if you and I can get that right. So one of the first things as a, uh, as a family, because it's first family and then it's church. As a family, the, see, God created family first. How many know that? Amen. He wanted a family. And if, if the enemy, you know, can get into the family, that's why you've got to be so protective of the family. Husband, wife, protect the family. Fight for it. Fight for it, not against it. Because if you want prayers answered, if you want miracles to happen, it's not my way or the highway. It's we come together in this. We come as matured people in God. When that unit works, the enemy can do nothing. Then the children, the family, everything else is protected, is watched. I mean, when you are bathed in that unity and in that prayer, oh my, the miracles that can happen there. Did you know when we not in agreement, Elise and I, and I go over here and pray, and I love the Lord, but God will not go against his own word. You know that? So what he, what he will remind me of is get up, get up your knees. Johan, that's so beautiful that you're on your knees and weeping, but, but, but get up, go over back to the bedroom. Well, you want your prayers answered, don't you? Yes, Lord. Okay, get up. You can come back and pray, for, you know, and, and talk to me again. But get up. Go back there. I didn't do anything. Shit. Boy, there's been long days when I've waited for her to come to me, and she would not come to me and say sorry. And the Lord would have me to go there. Oh, my goodness. What a I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's true also. But if I'm going to lead my children, if I'm going to be anything that God can use, these are some of the steps that I must take first. Amen? Amen? And I've got to learn them. And if I've been harsh with the kids or unfair or mean or whatever that is, I have to humble myself. Because they watch me in church. How many know the kids watch you in church? You can't be different at the house and then something else in church. If I say to you that, that we should humble ourselves before the Lord and bow our knee before God, and I go home and they never see me do that, how many know that's hypocrisy? But if I can do that at home, not for their sakes only, but they watch what they see. Or they learn by what they see, not so much as what I say. So I've got to be the first when we gather together or whatever, how much fun we have or whatever that may be, Elise and I need to be the forerunners in teaching them how. Amen. Are we perfect? By a long shot, no, sir. Amen. Not at all. But in striving, in pushing, in having the same goal, the same purpose, because I'm after unity. If Jesus said, if you are in me and I'm in him, he talked about that perfect love so I pray this for God's people. Lord, I just thank you even now in the name of Jesus that that unity you've been praying about that you've been asking the Father for. You said, Lord, that I pray, I pray that they may become one as I and you, Father, are one. You want us to be one, not only with you, but with each other. So I just release that anointing of unity among us. This church our homes, our household, our families, our businesses, our co-workers, wherever we go as believers, Lord, if we find another believer, we want to love them and embrace them. And we're praying tonight not only for our homes, but we pray for every church in our community. We pray for every pastor. We pray, Lord, for the wisdom of God, the increase of God to happen in those churches. Let miracles happen. And, Father, that unity be in those churches, Lord. We know when we pray for others, you're going to make happen for us. You're going to make it happen for us. You're opening the windows of heaven over us right here as we endeavor to do our part. We bless them. We praise you, Father. I anoint your people. I pray over them. I speak your blessings over them with unity and strength. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Somebody give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.